Hey, hey, this is Julian and you are on Eat the Blocks. And in this video, I'm going to show you how we can integrate React in an Ethereum decentralized application. And for this, we're going to use the old API of React with the lifecycle method like a component did mount. So in general, it's better to use the new API with the hooks, but sometimes you want to use some libraries that, that are only compatible with the old API of React. And in this case, you have no choice but to use the old one. All right, so first things first, and I'm going to go to my terminal and start a React dApp by using the truffle unbox command. By the way, that means that you are supposed to install the truffle CLI before, so you can do this with npm install global truffle. All right, so let's do this truffle unbox react. And this is going to install a Truffle project with React already integrated. So the smart contract will be developed with Truffle and the front end will be developed with React. All right, so let's see what we have in our directory. So this is a standard Truffle project. And in the contracts folder, we have a sample smart contract, simple storage. So that's the one we're going to deploy. And all the front end is inside the client folder. So this is a standard React project that was created by the Create React App CLI. All right, so let me clear my screen. And then we're going to start a local development blockchain by running the truffle develop command in another terminal. So here, let's do this with the truffle develop command. And then we deploy our smart contract with migrate dash dash reset. So this deployment command not only deployed the smart contract to the blockchain, but it also produced a JSON file with the required info to interact with the smart contract. So we're going to have the address of the smart contract and the ABI. So that's the interface of all the function we can interact with. Let's see inside the client directory and inside the src folder. And you should see this JSON file inside the contracts and here, this is a simple storage.json. So here we can see the deployment address of our smart contract, and we're going to use this from the front end. So next, we are going to install the dependency of the front end. So I'm going to another terminal in the client directory, and I'm going to run npm install. All right, and after we're going to start the front end with npm start. And then in the browser window, you should see this appearing at localhost column 3000. So that means that everything is working fine. So now we're going to inspect the code. So let's go back to terminal and I'm going to open app.js inside the src directory. So that's the main file for the code. And I'm going to expand my editor so we can see clearly. All right. So this is a standard React component. And it import a couple of stuff. So first it import the JSON file, simple storage that has all the information for our deploy smart contract. And then it has an, an helper function called get web3 that will return an instance of web3 connected to the Ethereum blockchain. So this is not a video on web3. So I'm going to pass very quickly on that. I'd like to focus instead on React. But very briefly, what it does is it check if MetaMask or another wallet has injected a Web3 object in the page. And if that's the case, then it's going to use this. Otherwise, it's going to create a Web3 instance from scratch. And you can check at getweb3.js to inspect the code of this. And basically, we're going to combine this Web3 object with the info of simple storage.json to create what we call a contract instance. So that's another JavaScript object. And with this, we will be able to communicate with our smart contract. So let's dive into the code of the app component. So let's scroll down a little bit. And the main part here is component did mount. So when your component is loaded for the first time, this function is going to be called. So that is triggered by React. And the first thing we're going to do is so we call a get web3. So we get this web3 instance. Then we fetch all the accounts that are associated with our wallet so that we can sign transaction. 
then we get the ID of the networks. So depending on which Ethereum network you connected to, this is going to be a different value. So a mainnet is going to be one. Um, then for Robston uh, and other network, it will be different value. Then what we do is we check inside our JSON file and there is a key that is called networks. And so we're going to extract a part of the info in this file. And then with this, we're going to create our Web3 contract instance with this Web3 if dot contract. So we pass the ABI of the JSON file and the same thing for the address of the smart contract. And after with this instance object here, we can communicate with our smart contract. So this is good. But the problem is that since we define our instance variable here inside component the demand, we will not be able to use it outside this function. And that's a problem. So the way we get around this is that we store this in the state of the component. So here below in set state, then you can see that we saved everything that we will need later. So Web3 accounts and also the contract instance. And once we have stored the state, then we're going to run a function to initialize everything. So run example. Uh, and here we extract what we get from the state and we're going to send a transaction. So that's just a demo. But of course, in your, uh, in your DAP, it's going to be different. And we can also call read only function. Uh, with the contract instance and we can store the result also by using state. So you see that here by combining the contract instance and the state, then we can communicate between different parts uh, of, uh, of our component. And after in our render function, so what we do is first we check that the Web3 object is in the state. So that means that component demand was executed already. If that's not the case, we're going to show a loading screen. And once this is inside the state, then that, that means our application is ready. So in this case, we're going to show the actual HTML and then we can access anything that was read from the smart contract, for example, storage value from the state. So this is a very simple example with a, with a single component. But in most cases, your application will be composed of several components. So that means that you will need to access your contract instance and also maybe Web3 from a child component. So how are you going to do this? Well, this is very, very simple. The only thing you need to do is to pass a prop to your child component. So let's say that here we're trying to render our child component. So child component. And we're going to pass it Web3 like this. This dot web3 and also the contract instance like this so contract this state dot contract and then in your child component then you can call any function of your smart contract by using these dot state dot contract exactly like in this, the parent component here by the way, if you want to learn how you can become a blockchain developer and get your first blockchain job, I've prepared a free training that you can follow at this address. And I'm going to give you all my secrets after you register. All right, so that's pretty much it on how you can integrate React in your decentralized application by using the old API of React. Act. So again, you would use this API only if you are using a library that is only compatible with the old API of React. But in most cases, you want to actually use the new API of React with hooks and context. And I'm going to show you this in the next video. Thanks for watching. And if you have any question, you ask them in the comments down below. Bye bye.